Yeah, the door creaking is in the song. <laughs> I was a little confused. That was intentional. Okay. I asked him about that. He's an artist. He is an artist. It's a nice little guitar recording. Yeah. Is it's that a, Apple Loop? Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's I think it's a loop he made though. Oh, cool. Yeah, like not playing an actual guitar, but the guitar in the Garage Band. Yeah. So uh, that was Break of Dawn, and that is by eleven-year-old Maximus Troy. He is my boy, so he uh, makes music for me when uh, when I can't get other local artists on. So uh, I'm hitting the B tracks of his though. So like that's that one needs some work yet, right? But it's a uh, so that's like a pre-release uh, garage version of his garage band track. So Break of Dawn, download it on iTunes. Make make me rich. It's not on iTunes yet. <laughs> uh, but the well, po- technically it is on iTunes. Technically it is on iTunes. See? You, I, you just stole the words right out of <laughs> my mouth, right? So our podcast, I should be telling everybody this from now on, right? This is on iTunes. You can subscribe. So if you go to uh, in iTunes on Mac or, or whatever it's called, Windows I don't know. Uh, <laughs> PC. Some, I don't know what they call that stuff anymore. Not n- not Apple. Not Apple. Yeah. Because Linux also, I think, has an iTunes. No, there's no iTunes for Linux. So they have you, something else. Well, there's something that there are probably, ways to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. I you can whine it. I'll have to look that up. Well, yeah, you can Yeah, you can do it under emulation of some kind, yeah. Uh, but uh, you can go to the podcast store in iTunes, search for Ideas by Elliot, and it'll be there. It's pretty awesome to do that. I did, and you can do that on the Apple TV. I did that. And uh, it's also up on Stitcher, Stitcher Radio. Uh, and you can uh, get to all that stuff by going to my website, ideasbyelliot.com. There's links to all that stuff. You can uh, play the tracks. Sponsors are listed there, uh, like the awesome Camcorder Studios that we're in. Thanks, Elliot. Yeah, I got I to gotta do a better job with that. I know. I'm working. I'm working on it. So today... Uh, as you know, because you're playing this and their names are already on the track, I have Christina and Heather. So a lot of firsts this time. You two are my youngest guests yet. Uh, Solid. For, right? You're both under 20, right? <laughs> Close. Yep. Yeah. And uh, this is the first time I've had like two official guests on. So usually it's one on one. It's, it's uh, so. This are is, you slightly intimidated? Yeah. That you're outnumbered. Yeah. Well, uh, I I was late for uh for the I recorded one with Nicole this morning, and I was a few minutes late, and that's because I, I couldn't sleep last night. We had a great it was a great party. Uh, ran into Christina's mom and dad there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, and and I told them about the show. I don't think they understood what I was talking about. I feel kind of bad about that. Uh, you'd be surprised, though. My mom is getting pretty savvy on okay. her iPhone. Fair enough. It was your dad that was a little confused. <laughs> so fair enough. And she she was kind of quiet on the whole thing. So I think she's going to check it out. Yeah. And uh, so give me your full names so that you say them instead of me. Okay. We'll start with Christina. Uh, hello. My name is Christina Ingebus. And uh, you do what? I work at Title Town. I manage our distribution uh, for all of our package and draft yeah, products. So you have to be more explicit now because there's going to be a Title Town district in Green Bay. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> the original Title Town Brewing Company. <laughs> 
And Heather, let's hear from you. Um, my name is Heather Ludwig. Um, I just uh, recently ended my uh, my journey at Titletown Brewing Company. Um, and in fact, we had a killer party last night. It was pretty killer. So how many people do you think were at this party? Oh, Did know. it hit your goal? What was your goal? 10. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, there was like 11 people there. Yeah, probably. For sure 11. There were 11 people at my table. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, at one point, it was a little overwhelming just with like all the people there. Like I knew it was going to be like that. And I'm just glad that I wasn't you. Yeah, I I mean, I expected to see a lot of friendly faces, but um, yeah. I had no idea that it would be <laughs> be that awesome. Sorry, I was making gestures because I think, Christ, I don't know if Christina's being picked up on the microphone properly. Okay. Well, and she doesn't, and she doesn't have it quite pointed at her directly either. So I was like. Hello. Oh yeah, much better. Okay. <laughs> No, okay, 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 I'm sorry. And we're not going to cut that because we're all rough edges here. So just, Rough and you know, tough. Yeah, maybe we'll cut that. In fact, I don't even know if I was recording any of me saying any of that, so I think okay. I was off for the moment. Okay, so now so that it'll be like extra weird. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimate awkwardness for the audience. That's how you get viewers or listeners. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to jump to Heather because I got a million things to talk to Christina about. Hmm. No, but uh, really, this this was the scheduling of this, and this whole thing is really revolving around Heather. No offense to Christina, but whatever. Uh, yeah, see, je- <laughs> jealous. Uh, but tell me about your new gig. Um. Well, I uh, I'll be joining the Pabst team very soon. Um, I start there September first. Um. It's a pretty exciting project. Uh, the focus is to bring uh, brewing back to its roots, um, the original location down in down in Milwaukee. Uh, there hasn't been a, a name, um, and for the new place, um, there's a. It's at the very beginning stages, so. So do you get to help decide on the name and everything? Yeah, I think I get a little input nice. on on some things, or yep. at least a vote. Yeah, and what know. are you going to be doing there? Uh, I will be doing a. A lot, but focusing on on brewing beer. They're um, going to go down a uh, a craft a craft path. They uh, they see where the industry is going, and um, they want to be a part of it. So uh, I think they're looking to recreate some of uh, the older recipes that Pabst brewed in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So we'll kind of focus on on recreating some of those recipes. Um, and then from there, you know, the rest of the lines will be left up for some creativity and one-off seasonals, things like that. That's super cool. And you can jump in anytime you want on any of this, Christina. I'm not used to having two guests, so. Can I jump in quick? Hell no. yes. Because I, I, I have a serious <laughs> I have a serious question here. So the Pabst Brewery, I was actually there last year for my wife's birthday. There's a hotel there now. Mm-hmm. Oh, that yeah. hotel like, is sick. It's, all the original brew yeah. kettles and everything there. I, we we went for the night for her for her birthday, but it, it's phenomenal hotel. Yeah, it's so, one of the coolest hotels I've ever stayed in. But they're not going to be brewing there. I assume there's a building like next door or something. Yeah, yeah. the uh, the The new facility is uh, in an old renovated cathedral, or it has yet to be renovated. Um, it's right around the corner from the original brew house, the uh, brew house Inn and Suites. So. Okay. Wow. Okay. I was just wondering because I didn't want the brew house to go away, but I also didn't want Paps to go away. And like two awesome things. Well, so, that whole campus that they have down there, like the Paps compound, it, I mean, there's potential for a multitude of other businesses to come in and like, I mean, there's buildings that are unoccupied as part of the Paps property. They're just really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's exciting to see what may happen in the future with that. Yeah, so I was going to ask the same question because uh, just a few months back, uh, Gina's cousin had a wedding there. And yeah, it's a nice place. Absolutely. You've been there too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. St. Gambrinus, the stained glass is unreal. It's going to be like in that scene from Willy Wonka when the smoke starts coming out of the chimneys again. (laughs) And then someone's going to walk by and be like, nobody ever goes in and nobody ever comes out. (laughs) 
<laughs> We're not going to invite these two back as co-hosts. Oh, come They're on. not fun. They're not fun at all. No. No. So uh, I feel like they are hugely lucky to have have you as part of that. And I'm not going to say like heading it up or anything like that and put pressure on you, but I feel like that's a major, major thing for a company like that that's trying to reinvent itself, so to speak. Um, and I know they're just a division of what whatever now, but you know, but they're a they're a globally recognized brand name, and uh, but they they sort of languished, and they had a little resurgence, you know, with the whole hipster beer thing, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. But um, for them to get, uh, you know, a young, cool looking female brewer really adds something to them that really ups their whatever you want to call it their street cred their um well i think it's incredibly strategic to put the right people in the right places yeah that's a way better way of saying what i was trying to say um yeah but if you look at like and heather i don't want to speak for you but all of the efforts that we've done to not only like promote title town but craft beer in general like it's just we're her and I are just been so focused on the industry. So to, for Paps to put someone that passionate in that role is just, it's a no brainer. Yeah. Well, so I was talking to Christina's dad a little bit about it and I think he's, uh, sort of in awe of <laughs> as I am. So I, I didn't know if he was just saying it back to me, but, um, you know, we have this perception and maybe it's because we're all, you know, I'm old, but he's way older. He's way, way, way older just going to throw that out there even though i'm technically dad you're still doing good don't you let that (laughs) technically i'm still i'm a grandpa so you know that's why i'm throwing that out there i'm not i'm not knocking on your dad Uh, (laughs) uh and he knows that i love the guy we love you dad yeah but um he there's this 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 thing that we tell our kids to do and that you know we've all been told to do you know study hard in high school go to college and like follow this path and i know you went to college christina uh i don't know i don't know if you did heather or if you you know how how what your degree is or if you have a degree or any of that stuff but you kind of forged your own path so tell me a little about that yeah i uh, i definitely took a a different route um but i think the i didn't really know for sure until maybe if Four, what was it? Four years ago, I don't know. Four, four years ago, I had kind of a a turning moment where um, I went to the Great Taste of the Midwest and was very um, very amazed by how much talent and and uh, really the local community. Like, I mean, well, the Midwest, obviously. So there's it stretches pretty far. far. Yeah. Kansas, Nebraska, yeah, Pennsylvania. But um, I mean, <clears throat> just going to that event and being there to uh, represent Title Town and just see the passion and the excitement, um, I realized that you know this is something that I wanted to do more. Well, that was the, our first, our trip to the Great Taste of the Midwest was our first big industry event that we had ever been to, so it was really awesome to see the playing field that Title Town was on, but also see what the industry was like. I mean, meeting brewers and um, meeting their teams and seeing what they're doing and the innovation and and the different systems that they work on and the different places that they come from was really awesome. Yeah, I think that's key to um, <clears throat> meeting some of, some of the other brewers too. And like we were so kind of... Um, Starry-eyed. You know, we, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, and then we, we work with the... Brewmaster at Title Town Brewing Company, um, David Oldenburg, mm-hmm. um, very talented. He did the you know the Siebel route of things. He he did go to school for brewing, and um, he's wicked smart. Yeah, he's wicked smart. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, and that works out fantastically. And thank like thank goodness for Title Town that that he is there doing that. Um, but you kind of get out into. Um, festivals where you're meeting some of these other brewers and and they come from all all different walks of life um and you kind of realize that you well, know there no really is no right standard. or wrong way to go about no 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 totally wrong they all have giant beards 
<laughs> I mean, you guys have giant beards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine's a little, <laughs> little out of sorts this morning. But. I, I brushed mine before I came. <laughs> so I, I uh, is it Sam? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you know who I'm talking about. So um, speaking of beards. So we were joking about that. That's yeah. So he he was I don't know. I walked away and he was I don't know why he was there. Maybe you were talking with him and Gina. I don't really know. But I came back and he was at our table, and and he's like, yeah, you know, I I work with them and I you know I brew beer and I'm like, well, you don't say. <laughs> Crazy. So I thought it was pretty funny, you know, but, uh, uh, Sam's a great guy for the record. His excitement when he, oh my gosh, he uses his hands to talk more than I do. And I do that a lot. He was, it was, he was animated yeah, for real, but, uh, he is, you know, sort of like the stereotype, uh, a little bit. He very much fits the perceived idea of what a brewer should look like. Yeah. But there is something to be said about very... Um, small women brewers, they fit behind tanks yeah. and up on top of vessels a lot better than big, burly, yeah. bearded men. Yep. That's, you know what, that's a great point. So that's something I didn't, I never even thought about. Like they make Heather shimmy into some pretty tight corners at Title Town. Like anything, anything for the team. So, so that's your real value. Well, and it is anything part of for it. the team. You have your Title Town Brewing Company shirt on. Yeah. You represent. Yeah. Uh, I, I did not, but I had it on last night. I did. It was yellow and nice. I think I have enough Title Town T-shirts to wear oh, a different yeah. one every day of the month. Oh, really? It's been seven years of collecting, yeah. so I what? just found my little honey hole of Title Town shirts that I thought I lost forever. There was like forty of them in there, oh <laughs> and I opened up a drawer and I was like, "Oh my god, there they are!" I thought they were gone forever. I have a collection, and I've never worked there, so. My favorite yeah. is my long sleeve dark helmet shirt, which is no longer oh, available. Right. And it's not for sale. <laughs> so, I tried. Maybe for trade? <laughs> you got to be putting some pretty heavy-weighted goods on the table for it. But nice. I'm up for negotiations. Nice, nice. So uh, what brought you guys into beer? Uh, Either one you can start. I don't know. I guess like every other red-blooded Wisconsinite, I stole it out of my parents' garage. So that was my first experience with it. No, tell me more. Um, <laughs> well, it, they well they didn't know anything, so it was always just like Budweiser, or Miller, High Life, and well, and I won't scoff at a High Life ever. Um, I like High Life, champagne of beers. Yeah, and actually, if you think about High Life, they could spin that beer in a whole direction where that champagne of beers slogan could go. That could take off wildly in, sure. in a different way, but nevertheless, mm-hmm. um, I don't know my. Curiosity was always well. Maybe I'll try something different when I when I would have other people buy me beer when I was not twenty one. I God, I should be saying all these bad things that I've done. <laughs> but I would be like, no, get me something different. I don't want Miller Lite. You know, grab Rolling Rock, which just anything that wasn't Bud Light, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And then from there, it kind of just steamrolled. My fat. I had a fat tire when no one knew what Fat Tire was because it wasn't distributed in Wisconsin. Right. And when my brother went to Colorado, he brought some back. He's like, you gotta try this beer. It's from this brewery. We don't even get it here. It's called Fat Tire. And I was just like, oh my God. Wow, like, nice. where can I get more of this? And So which brother brought that for you? Uh, my brother, Nate. Yeah. He used to uh, ski bum it out in Colorado every winter break. Nice. So wait, when was your first Fat Tire? My first Fat Tire was in... He was a junior in college. Hold on. 2000. Oh, is this a contest? 2000. Is there a contest brewing? 2000? Mm-hmm. Well, I, um, I didn't drink while I was in high school. Oh, stop it. <laughs> you lie. <laughs> it's um, beer. Beer isn't well, drinking. Well, you, you were by far more craft advanced than I was because I... I didn't drink much in high school, but I know when I was, I wasn't drinking craft beer. So I mean, yeah. let's not fool anyone. There were plenty of blue <laughs> UV and lemonade nights. Like, come on, I was eighteen, nineteen. Yeah. So um, Wait, much more sophisticated now that I'm in my thirties. Right. Yes, very sophisticated. In your band T-shirt and your ripped <laughs> jeans. <laughs> and flip flops. Uh, do you have flip flops on? I didn't even notice that. Oh sure goodness. Do. Oh well. This is done. We're done here. 
No, just kidding. I'm I'm kind of dressed the same, so I can't really make fun of you. But uh, so I'm actually uh, like professionally. So you know, so that's sort of how you guys got into beer, like you know, like a lot of people. But um, everybody doesn't become you know world famous brewmasters. I, I think it so. goes back to us talking about great taste. I think that mm-hmm. was kind of a turning point for both of us that year. And um, well, it was like a we drank the Kool Aid. Uh, yeah. The, proverbial kool-aid like it was like i'm i can't we have to do this like this has to be our life like we just have to do whatever we can so to make you're it saying happen. we so like did you jointly decide kind of yeah we are doing this yeah kinda. yeah there was like a moment where we were sitting outside the park and was like we had a discussion like this is what we're doing wow yeah Beers. well and both of us were bartending at the time and that was at great title town. Yep. um you know, we had just kind of um, started going on Brewfest, um, which was a whole new thing. Well, and we were lurking around the that grain room in the brewery trying to scam any free magazines that they would throw out there. It was like like throwing chum out to the sharks. Like they would put a, a new brewer issue from like six months to a year out and Heather would snipe it up right away. Mm-hmm. Yep. So um, that's not what I was told. What were you told? Um, so Sean said that you got involved in the brewing process because um, to meet guys. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm with married. beards? Yeah. No. Um, he he actually said that it was very clear that you did not have a future bartending because you break too many glasses. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. You do still have the record, I believe. Well. I, I'll tell you what, I washed dishes the fastest and there were some casualties in there, but... Well, then it doesn't really count, right? You didn't wash it if you broke it and you threw it away. Well, sometimes I washed it and then it broke. <laughs> well, that doesn't count either. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, yeah, I broke a few glasses in my day, but I never like held one from six feet up and dropped it while looking Sean dead in the eye. It, was just, it, was <laughs> it sounds like you did. <laughs> Maybe once or twice. <laughs> She figured if she broke them all, she wouldn't have to pour anymore. Or, yeah. Well, then okay. Let's be fair. Now they have a bar back, so oh. now they have a guy that comes in and washes glasses. For, maybe I was the catalyst oh. for the bar back. <laughs> you can tell yourself whatever you want. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nevertheless, I. So uh, you, so you guys kind of got together. You're out at a park, and you're like, "This is what we need to well, do." We were at Olin Turville, where the Great Taste is held yeah. every year. So. Um, and where where's that? Madison. Okay. But it kind of really, I mean, it was a combination of several different things. Some people were leaving the brewery, and they one of the marketing guys was leaving Titletown, too. So it created these spaces where voids needed to be filled. So um, we kind of saw it before it was officially happening, and I think... You got to strike you, yeah. when the timing is right. Yeah, basically... Um, I I said, is there anything that I can do? And, uh, you know. They were like, yep, kind of the crappiest yep, job yep. in the brewery. <laughs> kind of raised their eyebrows and were like, are you serious? And I said, yeah, I'll do whatever. And it just kind of started with lugging kegs around, hauling in grain, taking spent grain out. Oh, come on. Mashing and out and isn't that bad. Over. No, it's not. Um, it's the it really cleaning isn't. the lines that sucked. Yeah, so it kind of just progressed because he, I think David, um, our brewmaster, he he just didn't expect us to stop asking. We weren't going to stop bugging him, and he thought, why not? Why not give him a chance to do it? So, well, good for him nicely. for having that kind of foresight. Really, right? This is all it's all due to David. Is that is that what you're saying? David gave us a lot. David gave us a lot of opportunities to showcase what we've learned and also put our work ethic to, to the test too. Yeah. So, and, and he's been nothing but what I would say, how do I express that he's so smart and he's instilled like all of this, like he's taught us a lot. Yeah. It, it's, it's really incredible and you can ask him things. And if you ask him in a certain way about something he doesn't know, he'll stop and he'll look at you and cock his head a little bit. And then he'll come back with an answer that completely, not over explaining things, and it's not like it was too much knowledge, but the fact that he had to think about how not to give you too much, like, in case you went into system overload. 
Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're saying. And I mean, so anybody that's sort of a master of their craft, no pun intended, right? The um, They do have to distill it down to, to things that well, and other people can understand. Well, it's knowing what See level all these, all these to alcohol to. terms I'm, I'm throwing in there? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. My mind is always brewing. <laughs> oh, God damn it, Elliot. <laughs> and you said you couldn't do a comedy show. <laughs> no, I, no, I think everybody else said that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, how is beer made, actually? Like the you know the brief version of that. Speaking of that. oh well, you just snap your fingers and the tanks fill, and that's right. how it goes. Right. Well, because that's so really your job is super easy. You just mm-hmm. you're, you guys are just putting a you know a better looking face. Sorry, David, but you get, you're putting a better looking face on it. Um, I wish I could snap my fingers and make <laughs> those tanks fill up, but uh, no, it's a it's a really big process, and um, right now on the production side, things okay. Like obviously you have your four you know, ingredients: hops, malt yeast water but it's way more complex that, than that and to operate a brewery is way more than just brewing beer like, most yeah i mean that's i think that's one big misconception is most of your time is spent preparing, preparing or cleaning vessels to actually make make beer happen um like the brew day is just one day but there's so much more that goes to make the brew day work you know there's milling there's like heather said cleaning or vessels like, it's like an hour in lecture, you need to spend three hours doing homework. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, so, kind of talk me through the process briefly, like start to finish, so to speak. How do you make beer? So you have um, malted barley. We use barley. You can also use corn, wheat, gluten-free beers. Use sorghum, uh, but a source of sugar, uh, essentially. And you mill that for us. Like I said, barley. Mill it. Crack it open. Expose all the sugars. Mix the grain with hot water, create, you know, steep it, create almost like you would if you think of making tea. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's called wort. Uh, you then transfer, you pull all of your wort off your grain, you rinse your grain. I'm really watering this down. I hope this is not. Oh, that's like, good. Okay. <laughs> um, that was actually quite funny. She's sparging this conversation. <laughs> oh, good one, Heather. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so I thought that's what you meant when you said that. I thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah. I was just rolling with it. Uh, yeah, so we're watering it down, mm-hmm. literally. That's good. Uh, and you transfer that wort then, and you rinse your grain um, into your brew kettle where you boil the beer, add your hops, different beers, use different hops. Some hops are used for making beer bitter. Some are used for those fantastic aromas you get. Uh, and then when you're done boiling and adding your hops, you uh, centrifuge it, whirlpool it, drop all that stuff out. Quickly cool it down and then transfer it to your fermenter where you will pitch your yeast. Uh, ale yeast and lager yeast are different. Uh, ales usually take about two weeks to make to ferment, and lagers can be anywhere from between three weeks and eight weeks. If you're really lucky, it's <laughs> eight weeks. <laughs> uh, Why do you say that? Oh, God. Well, you have to think of these tanks as like real estate. Mm-hmm. So when someone's squatting in a tank for too long, you can't use it. Mm -hmm. So you want to turn these tanks over as much as you can. And if you have a really sluggish yeast, it's a, it's a problem. So, so, uh, so it can take up to, you know, two months to sometimes. Yeah. yeah, If you, so what are the faster beers? Like off the top of your head, which ones take least less time and which ones take the most? And you can either use like the title tone brand names or just in general, well, what, you know, whatever. David was just telling me that it, he can do one beer almost in nine days. What? what? Well, I think I think uh, that might be true with some of the most ales. of the ales. Yeah, we use a, a house ale yeast that um, is reliable and um, it's worked well for us for many years. It it ferments great. And so, in title town brand names, what would be some of those? Um, Not to put you on the spot. No, we're using we're using that house yeast strain for the all uh, the core beers yeah, except all, for dark helmet. Yeah, so that you're looking at green nineteen, the Johnny Blood Irish Red Ale, Honey Ale, four hundred Honey Ale. Yep. Now the Boathouse Pilsner. When I talk about like yeast being eight weeks, that's the one that when we, whenever you scale a beer to a larger system, you're going to have to change how you operate and 
working on that large of a system with that yeast strain and several other factors, um, that beer's just taken a while. But albeit everything from the tasting on that beer has been really exciting. Like yeah. it's going to be fantastic. Like the Boathouse Pilsner when it comes out. Drink it. Please don't drink too much or too fast because it might be a while before it comes back out again. But so no, it's well worth the wait. I mean, that was that's our most recent. Oh no, it's not. It's not our most recent medal that we've won for, from Great American Beer Festival. But it is the gold medal winner um, on a really tough style to nail down, and David's done it. And uh, I so which 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 one? Boathouse Pilsner. The Boathouse Pilsner. If you can do a Pilsner like that, is a, a Pilsner is a testimony to a brewer's like or breweries quality of product now do you think that's because people the public in general are more familiar with those no because if you are just literally screw up a pilsner and you can't add bourbon or you can't like you can't change it a, a pilsner is a pilsner and it's clean and crisp and there's no hiding a flaw in a pilsner it's a mm-hmm. very um transparent so the like style People would classify that, I think, as a lighter beer, right? Lighter bodied. Yeah, lighter bodied. Very, that's yeah, that's a better way to say it. And uh, but it but it's much more complicated and takes a longer time. Is yeah, that, yeah. There's a lot of misconceptions about beer, and actually, I wanted to point one out when I was talking about the whole process about you know people say like I don't like lagers or I don't like ales or I don't you know like they assume that one's happier or stronger than the other but both yeah. ales and lagers can be dark and light and malty and hoppy and strong abv or very low abv so abv is what alcohol by volume okay. so you can have for instance an ale that <laughs> what, what what was that other? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not appropriate i i think she's she, i think she was saying that's the part that gets you messed up uh, well, okay, that this is, is a perfect example. Look at like the Honey Ale, which is at four and a half percent, like these are Tidal Town brands, obviously. And then look at the Curdy's Hot Monster, which is also an ale, and that's at nine percent. So, and one's- And both are very light in color and look very appealing and drinkable. Yeah, right. <laughs> and one's super duper happy and one isn't, so. And yeah. you just happened to have brought some today. I don't oh. want to drink any beer right now. Oh. Where? <laughs> No, Wait, I'm still on the clock, aren't I? They didn't bring any beer. I'm just kidding. Oh, can we, though? Would that have been acceptable? Uh, I would have allowed that, as yeah, long as yeah. I'm not drinking it, it. It's your show. Maybe next time? Uh, Yeah. If you'll have us back. Uh, what? <laughs> I already, already told us we couldn't come back. We can, <laughs> um, we can so. have a battle of the beers, though, because it'll be two different breweries then, won't it? Uh, oh. We don't consider it battling. Oh, I thought you were going to say we don't consider it two separate breweries. No. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we strive on focusing on craft community um, and, and collaboration. But So, you know what? Uh, I want to just take a, a, a brief uh, break to, you know, thank Camera Corner Studios. So, we, uh, I'm going to, you guys are going to be part of that, but I want to come back to that. So, that's sort of the tease. All right. So, that's what we're, we're uh. having a tease to keep people listening. Um, so, um, what I like to do is I have, this is your first time here in this building, right? Yes, or at least as as it is now. Yeah, has right? this building always been here? Because the strip club kind of, I didn't see it. Right, the building was here. It used to be a print shop. Or yeah, like, for for not that long, though. Maybe five years? I think, well... Was it longer than that? I'm it probably that. was. It just feels... I'm, I'm getting I right. mean, I've been told the story <laughs> multiple times. That it used to be an auto shop, then it was a garage, and then... Oh, that's it was like an auto years shop, ago. wasn't it? Probably a long time ago. It was a long time, but yes, where you are sitting right now used to be a automotive repair area. So um, what I want to ask you guys, and especially Christina, is, you know, actually, um, you're kind of involved sometimes on the marketing end of Title Nuts Operations. So... Uh, they do some video shoots in here and obviously we can do some uh, audio recording and they can do photo and video and all that kind of stuff and there's even a little classroom type of area how do you think that you could maybe use this with title town um not to put you on the spot but i think you have a marketing mind well unfortunately i don't make a lot of the decisions (laughs) Or maybe fortunately. Well, that's what, but, what would you like to do? Um, I would love to see a brewery pop 
podcast go out, actually. I think it would be really cool to I would, do... I would love to be part of that. More That'd brewing. I mean, we've been listening to a lot of podcasts, um, and some I'm of them... I'm addicted to them madly. Oh, my God. And they're... Good. They're fantastic, and they're yeah. all about, like... Like, for instance, we were listening to these guys drive to Mammoth, California, in their RV for a beer fest, and how there's just breaks... Like they were warned several different ways not to be driving the vehicle they were on these roads, and when they finally got there, their brakes had all but disintegrated. Yeah. So it, it's just, it's entertaining. It's in the industry. I'd like to see some sort of um, consistent brewing. So uh, news. That's even more than what I was thinking. I was thinking uh, it would be great when we launched the new website to have oh. <laughs> some. Uh, a video of how you guys kind of do some of your stuff. You know, if you could do a little demo here or if we could, you know, integrate it in some things like that. Uh, you know, you could give a little talk with some teleprompters. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. Maybe those are all bad ideas. But uh, I want to incorporate more video into websites, uh, seeing all this stuff. So that's where I, that's where my head is at. You're laughing at me, Heather. I just, I, just uh, I don't think you need to have bad ideas by Elliot. Just... Ideas by Elliot is good. <laughs> you think that's a bad idea? You you said it. I didn't. Oh. No. Oh, so you're just laughing at me. No idea is a bad idea. That, that is poetic. But not true. <laughs> There's a lot of bad ideas out there. <laughs> I don't think they're bad until they go into execution. Oh, that's very um, true. Very that's true. That's where you really find out because the, there's so many things that. Well, I'm sure you run into this with beers too. Like, hey, let's try this new mix, and then you taste it. And uh, oh yeah, what was I thinking? Yeah, that definitely right. happens. But you know, like I, I, I actually thought that uh, um, something that can kind of differentiate a, a brewery would be a little bit more of that, like education process, where you're sharing some of that, <clears throat> like just not sharing secrets, but sharing just this is kind of how we do things, and you know, kind of show the people involved. Well, it's like I've been so. down to the to the Sprecher Brewery, and I've learned so much appreciation for beer because of the way their tour is handled. And I actually went on one of their special reserve tours yeah. where, you know, you have someone Oh, did there. you do the cheese pairing? Yes. It was fantastic. Really? Mm, See, I haven't done that yet. going to do that. You know, and, and people say that all the time, wine and cheese. Well, why not wine and beer? Right. Right? I mean- You mean beer and cheese? Yes. Yes. I mean, I say cheese. why not wine and beer? I, I, that, was, wow. that was an awesome Freudian slip. Yes. <laughs> but you know that that's the thing. The the pairings with the beer were just as great as any pairings with wine. And oh, it's I'll just... put a cheese pairing with beer against any wine pairing any day Ooh, of the week. Nice. I, I am a fanatic when it comes to my cheeses and I think my beer. There was some kind of like thing. There was some kind of event where there was like a face off of that. Am I wrong? Yes. And. Yes, I'm so wrong, off, or yes, no, there was. yes, you're right, okay. and yes, there was. And oftentimes the beer loses only because people don't realize the components that they're tasting. It's still mm -hmm. perceived differently. It's all about perception. And I, I had one of my best pairings of my life with our smoked beer and a dark chocolate cake with a salted caramel sauce over the top. And it was, argue, I, I, I'll put it out there, it was my best pairing ever. And I didn't get to talk about it because I got cut off by some event that was going on and the silent auction went up and everybody tried it and they didn't know what the hell was going on. Like they couldn't yeah. put it together, but if mm -hmm. I were able to like give them the verbiage necessary for them to understand what they were doing, maybe they would have thought differently. Yeah. It was good. I, I got to taste it and I know what you were going for. So good job. It was good. Thank you, Heather. Yeah. So you, I, so this, this spot here, this well both the spot and the spot in the podcast right the actual space here um so camera corner studios they sponsor my show so that's what we're you know we're kind of talking a little bit about that but um their goal here nick's goal is to bring small businesses in here that can't afford to do you know multi-thousand dollar video recording and photography and kind of squash those costs down and have them come in and kind of utilize these these things that sit dormant most of the you know most of the time because they get rented out by the day typically um and even some things that that are for sale they can you know they can get some some of that that caught the cost structures down on things and um his time is not even that expensive when you squash it down into hourly components. So you're able to gain uh, Nick's expertise and you see that he's, you know, kind of goes over the top even when I was talking about some of the things we're doing for the for, for this little podcast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he has all of our microphones on separate tracks and the music's on a separate track and everything's all awesome 
technical and complicated and there's microphones all over the place you don't even need you guys didn't even know that uh so there's a lot of stuff here and uh so uh nick how can people get in touch with you if they want to utilize your space here? easiest way is to call the rental department number over at camera corner that's 920-272-0148 awesome so that's let's look back to the talk about the collaboration amongst the breweries um that was our tease so we're gonna kind of move back to that so uh there's like an annual beer you guys all do together yes uh, or is it sort of just become sort of annual we did a collaboration beer twice now with all of the green bay breweries and we're most likely going to be doing another one for green bay craft beer week 2016 uh and but we have had nothing but positive relationships and we we love hanging out with our fellow brewers it's nice just to kind of have some solidarity because they know what you're going through and they know like they understand the challenges that you face in your industry and we we learn from each other and one success is like we said you know is, is a success for everyone when you have people you know and i was saying earlier how it's not just about like promoting title town but it's about it's about promoting craft beer in general yeah because if you buy for instance a wisco disco today mm -hmm. You're probably going to buy a green and 19. And Brad yeah. was at the party last night. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not just about the product. It is about the people and the people are all involved. Not to take you off yeah. track. Sorry. No, but like, okay, so I buy a Wisco Disco today. Yeah. Maybe I buy a green chop or a green 19 or a Packerland Pilsner tomorrow, you know, because that's what the craft beer drinkers don't. They're, they're not stuck with that one blue can right. for the rest of their lives. They nope. want new different stuff. For sure. So yeah, it's yeah. it's a success for everyone. I, I love Untapped, and uh, I think there was a time where people thought I had an alcoholism problem, because, <laughs> you know, because it looked it goes out to Facebook, and all your friends are like, hmm, "You're drinking a lot." And I'm like, "No, I, literally everything I drink, I'm putting up on Facebook." Um, it's about quality, not quantity. And it well. Um, so you're not what I'm saying is <laughs> you're not checking in an 18 pack of like right. Coors Light. Hell Although no, no. if you wanted to, you you could, I'm sure. Yes, yes. Uh, that yeah, for sure. You, I think you. Well, you can check in whatever you want, but yeah, I I, I don't think I've ever checked any anything like that. Like you didn't check in the 10 beer bongs that you may have done at a no. cookout. No. Yeah. No. See. How did you know about that? I know about all of the beer bongs in this town. <laughs> so, so they were doing uh, keg stands at the at the wedding at uh, up in uh, uh, we went uh, Rock Island up in Rock Island. They were doing keg stands. All these people that are you know, a lot of them are my age or older. That's awesome. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> you're never too old to shotgun a beer either, though. Don't right, think you're right. above that. And but, now craft beers are coming out in cans, which is awesome. So, but they did have Title Town beer up there too. Uh, so Whose they, wedding was this? I feel like I. Yeah, so this was. See, it's like the wedding. Was wed it in kegs? It was, it was the wedding. Was it, was it in, in bottles? It was in a keg. Um, Good, because we don't. Bottles near the beach scare me. Right, right. So it was a keg. Uh, I don't even remember what kind it was. Um, but it was. I know there was a Tidal Tumbeer up there. And um, it was uh, uh, Trisha Hawkins. Hawk. Hawk. Hawk I'm going to, I get her name wrong. I've, I worked with her over at Shopco and, uh, uh, Kat is her, the, uh, they're both wives now. I don't know how but to I say that. But I feel like yeah. I heard about, like someone yeah. else said that they were going to a wedding in Rock Island and I remember being yeah. really excited for them because yeah. Rock Island is super cool. Oh yeah. They had never seen, yeah, they had never been there. So. I'd never yeah. been there either. I had never. What did you think of the until... boathouse? Like all of that Norwegian, Scandinavian well, style. Uh, well, I brought Max with me, and he loved it. He thought it was great because it's you know like old runes, and he's like he he was just he was kind of blown away by that. Well, and you would never like expect the caliber of that. Oh, it's like big, thick, heavy. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it is very cool. Except we had to seek shelter there because uh, Saturday was beautiful weather, and then Sunday was like a hurricane. It was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It was crazy. We were on the bay. It was crazy. You were on the bay on on Sunday. Yeah, we like, took kayaks. Oh my god. <laughs> my <laughs> Yeah. Was so it was a stupid. horrible idea. The, the the phone, you know, the little, you swipe down and it yeah. tells you the weather real quickly. Yeah. Yeah, it said the wind was like 12 miles per hour. 
bullshit. It was wrong. Very, very so wrong. The, the thing about Rock Island, though, is you don't have that capability. So we didn't know the weather was coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> tell him. <laughs> so that, that reminds me. Um, if you didn't already know, in severe weather, um, there aren't any tornado sirens north of Sturgeon Bay in Door County. So once you go over that bridge in Sturgeon Bay, it's like sayonara, sucker. Like, yeah, yeah wow. fend for yourself. Wow. Yeah. No, I did not know that. We found out when we were working in Egg Harbor in July for the Door County Triathlon. And wow. we were sitting at like a team dinner and it's in like a cleared area of Murphy Park. And we're talking about what to do in inclement weather because this is like a huge a triathlon. They were anticipating like bad weather. So they were kind of just filling <laughs> us in. And incidentally, Sean Ryan, who runs a, a great event, was like, yes, so back in 1982, a tornado actually touched down right here. And we look around and he's like, yeah, notice how there's no trees <laughs> near any wow. of us. And then the next day came and it was like the most unreal clouds I've seen come off the water in my life. And I have spent a lot of summers on the bay. Yeah. And it was, it was terrifying. We had to seek shelter yep. in a pod. So I'm not usually afraid of the weather, but you know we're on this little island that our phones don't work. And oh yeah, you guys would have been screwed. You would have had to hang out in that little crazy Norwegian we boathouse. We had to. It was an extra hour. We had to wait, I think, to for the the little you know ferry to come back. It was crazy, and like uh, people had their gear all lined up on the whatever the, <laughs> the, the dock. dock, and uh, it was like blowing off from the wind <gasps> and the rain. It was crazy. Yeah, Gina has video of it. You wouldn't believe it. It's you would think it was, you know, the ocean in Florida or something. It was so crazy. Yeah. Hey, don't they call it death store up there for a reason. Uh, like they don't mess around. Well, you know, we had a lot of little talks about, you know, with Max about that. <laughs> he thinks he's gonna take over the island. He has uh he's aspirational. So uh, I'm sorry. I took us a little bit off track on the the collaboration of the. Of but the now everybody knows about the safety concerns know, for your county weather. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, it's your show, so you screwed it up, not me. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> I totally screwed it up. So I, I uh, tell me about the, the you did two beers collaboratively. So, yes. Oh. So who was involved in the collaboration, and then tell me about some of the beer. Well, Title Towns brewed both of them at their facility, right? Well, yeah, and not necessarily because we like had to brew it there, but only because we had to brew it there because everyone else is go undergoing um, expansions and yep. Hingeland was, I think they were just changing out their packaging the first time. So they were all focused on that. And, um, you know, Brad, for the first collaboration beer, his brewery was just getting up and running. Mm -hmm. And same with Badger State. So we brewed the first one at Tidaltown, and that was that uh, Imperial Steam beer. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of fun because that was the very first one, and everyone didn't know what to expect. And, you know, what are we going to name it? And I think Bill Tressler, Bill Tressler actually, yeah, he did come up with the name, which I love, locals only, exclamation point. Um, so uh, I know who some uh, these people are, but uh, you know, kind of fill in the gaps there. So you said Bill Tressler, he's from where? Uh, I'm sorry, Bill Tressler is the owner of Hinterland. Okay, so, and and the other the other breweries involved, who are those guys? Uh, Stillmake Brewing Company. So that was Brad. Brad Stillmake, yep. uh, Badger State Brewing Company, Andrew Fabre, uh, and his head brewer Sam Yanda collaborated on a lot of that, and then. We had Hinterland Brewing Company. Uh, Bill was involved with it. Scott Kissman, who is one of their head brewers, Joe Carls. Uh, he there, yeah. yeah, he was. He's another head brewer there. And then from Titletown, it was me, Heather, David, uh, all working on that sort of stuff. Nice, so. nice. So the first one was called Locals Only, and that was an Imperial Steam beer. And actually, yeah. all the collab beers have been Locals Only. Um, the second time we did it for Green Bay Craft Beer Week, it was a grapefruit goza, which... What does goza mean? It is a... <laughs> God, I'm going to freeze on goza. And no, it's a lipstick style uh, wheat beer, beer, wheat beer, yep. brewed with salt and coriander. Okay, nice. So... It was delicious. I had some. Not yeah. going to lie. I, and we did I'm ours sure with grapefruit peel. So... You did yours, so the different breweries. No, no, no. Did it differently? No, the the collaboration, like the the four breweries together, 
when we did this take on on the style, we had just altered it a little. We uh, we didn't use any coriander, so um, stylistically it didn't quite follow the guidelines. But um, we weren't. I mean, we weren't brewing it for it to be judged. We were brewing it for people to enjoy, and we thought doing something different with the grapefruit peel would be a good choice. So it was this really fantastic, um, light, light-bodied, refreshing, slightly tart, salty. Like I could drink it every day in the summer. I, well, that's what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. really good. But the collaboration, you know, it happens not necessarily when you're brewing it, but all of the planning leading up to it, like the recipe and the ingredients. And then we did a tasting panel, like, do we leave it sit on grapefruit more? Do we add more salt? Like, Mm. what do we, and everyone sat and had samples. So when are these tasting panels? Well, (sighs) they're always last minute. Yeah, It's always like, we need to get together this week. When do you have time? Who can come? And it's like, I can can come. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) On behalf of someone's brewery? All of them. Yeah. I, you could be I a like representative for the, uh, I'll, the market. I will represent the market. There you go. Yeah, something like that. I've learned that I'm a horrible representative <laughs> of the market because <laughs> I don't drink beer like the general public does, and sometimes Uh-oh. it's a fault. Because um, I can't make like a decision. Well, I have to make the decision that I don't want to make. Oh. About like styles. Like I, if it were up to me, we would be brewing. A lot more sour beers because I love sour beers right now and they're super trendy but does the mass public want like no the everyday craft drinker they want something probably a little bit more approachable yeah yeah I like the crazy stuff so I did not like the the sour beer that that this is the only beer that I didn't like that title town did there was uh I think it was the Ned Flanders mm. oh I did not Elliot like it. I didn't like it well it's That's not okay. for everyone you're not supposed to like every style <laughs> Yeah, so I just I didn't like that, and I've had other sour beers that I did like. So you know maybe it's more you know, of it's an, okay. maybe it's more of an acquired taste. I don't know, but that like literally that's the only beer that like I did not want another of. <laughs> well, you know what though, that's the beauty of the craft industry is like Heather said, you don't have to like everything. Yeah, you. I did drink the whole pint. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna let beer go to waste. <laughs> well. That's well, pretty damn good, though, in all the years, if that's the only one you didn't want to order sure. another of. For real. And I feel like I've had, if, if if I didn't have a beer, that means it was in and out in a couple of days. I'm I'm pretty religious about trying So all the this is interesting then. Heather, was there ever a beer there that you didn't want to drink of? And is was there ever a beer that you, like, was your favorite? Now that you no longer work there, I feel, I feel like you can answer this question. I always told David if I didn't like it. Well, no, I mean, but like, what was your favorite? Now you get to tell the world. But what was your favorite and what was your least favorite? <laughs> oh, gosh. I, favorites are tough. Um, I, this is, it sounds really boring, but I was always a really huge fan of the Nutter Brown. I love that. I, I really enjoy that beer. Yeah. Um, I would have to, do I have, can I have more than one favorite? You can it was have a lot two. of years. I mean, it was it's your show. two. <laughs> um, well, okay. You can have a top five. Ooh. Okay. This is tough. Not um, really, because the ones that come to mind are probably your favorites. Right? All right. So uh, there was this beer that um, I really hope that Title Town brews soon because I could. I I've been wanting it again for is a long time. Is it the ABCDSB? Yes. It's the yes. ABCDSB. Um, I love that beer too. Fantastic. Tim Feaster named it. Way to go, Tim Feaster. Clever. You yeah. never thought it would be the name either. Um, so that was definitely one of my favorites. So why why is it named that way? Just because? Because the style's an ESB and ABCD. Which is a what? What's ESB? an ESB? Extra special bitter. It's okay. an English style ale. Yeah, okay. Uh, Even if I know some of these things, which I actually did not know that. Oh. But, and then uh, ABC to ESB to, just rolls yeah, right off the right, tongue. Right, right. So I just, you know, I want to, th- we're educating. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't know what my other favorites are, although I know you said I could only have two. Well, you no, had, I gave you a top five. You said oh. you had the Nutter Brown. Right, that, that's the name they have. Right, yep. it, it was called Title Town Nutter Brown. It was called yeah. Nutter Brown, and and the ABCD brewed for ESB. all the nutters. Yeah, I I love those, and I I like I like the line and Kugel's one too. But, um, so uh, I'll keep going. These are some of my other favorites. Yeah, right. I want you to finish the list. Um, I'm sorry. So I I thought she was done. I yeah no I I really enjoy the Pullman Porter. Oh, I knew you were gonna say that. I do too. Um, how do you feel about the Northwestern export? Mm. The Dortmunder that we did, and what's what what is what style is that? That's was a, that in like spring? 
uh, early spring. It's a um, German style lager. It's a more malt balanced lager. Yeah. It's almost like a Hellas style lager, but maltier. Um, yeah, and I mean, if I wouldn't be upset if I was stuck with Green Nineteen as the only beer that I could drink for, for the rest of your life. Yeah, I'd I think be there's okay a lot of people that. that say that. Yeah, that's a favorite. So you've got the Green Nineteen Nutter ABC is beer. Pullman Porter. Pullman Porter, and one more. I think I, um, I don't know. I gave up on it, but I do remember one that I don't like. Mm. The Smokemotive. The Smokemotive was definitely uh, on the bottom of the list. This really crazy smoked uh, wheat beer, and that it kind of. I, I'm not a big wheat fan as it as it is, so that one wasn't wasn't very good for me. But uh, I don't really like the pumpkin beer. What's what are we mm. smashing pumpkin? I. I don't like it. Um, you also don't like that? No, I just, the it's pumpkin just fad is, it's ridiculous. It's over the top. No. If you want to drink, well, you know what? No, you can drink whatever you want. But I feel like pumpkin beers, it's just too much. They're over. They're over. They're not over, but they'll never be over. <laughs> Are you People kidding love me? that stuff. Yes, I am kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we're almost at an hour, so I want to wrap it up because I know we all have, we, you know, you guys have jobs and Nick has to get going too. Uh oh. Not really. What what'd you want to no, say? I mean, I, I don't technically have a job okay. until okay, fair. September I'm, first. But you're so. moving. I am. So you have like moving stuff to do. That's not nothing. And, you know, even if that's just resting up, maybe you need a little beauty rest. I don't mm. know. I have no I'm idea. I'm taking the day. I'm having a blue gold day. Taking the day. <laughs> um, so, uh, Okay, real quick. Um, Tidal Town has started uh, putting things out in bottles and cans and getting it out. All cans? Over. What did For- you hear about cans? Oh, I'm sorry. Is that on the download? No, it's I'm fine. Uh, I'm messing with you. No, the cans were done for... Uh, I'm like, we might have to cut our first thing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, um, it's, it's, it's really exciting for all of us. It, it's, uh, we did a project uh, for Lambeau Field where we canned our beer. We brought in a mobile canner. The cans look so cool. And um, I'm going to make Brad still make shotgun one of our beers for once because he always makes me shotgun Wisco Discos. Nice. Mm-hmm. So now he's going to get a green 19. Back at you, Brad. And you should bring him in here to the studio with the green screen. And then you can put him, you know, you could put him, you know. Oh, you want a video? shotgun challenge? <gasps> this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. I'll be your guys' drivers when you're done. <laughs> okay. She was the last time. <laughs> yes, I was. Yeah. Thank you for being the voice of reason she and had responsibility. She me off the field from the casino because uh, yeah. Brad still make. Nice. And I shotgun too many. So, wh- so which uh, which uh, brands are being bottled and canned and so forth? Uh, so we are doing the Johnny Blood Red uh, Green 19. Both were canned f- for Lambo for that project. Um, but they're bottled. And then we are about to bottle the Boathouse Pilsner coming up soon. And the Dark Helmet Schwartz beer. And our Oktoberfest is available in bottles right now, too. Bent Tuba. Get nice. your hands on it. Well, you what can. Is Bent, Bent Tuba. Yeah, that's the name of our Oktoberfest. Oh, I didn't know that. It has that. a name. Did it last year? No. Oh, okay. And Brent okay. Wiker's on the on the label. It's oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh my it's gosh. fantastic. It's so great. Uh, I mean, that's not going to be a top seller then. Let's just be real. Nobody wants to see it. Uh, I, I think it's we actually <laughs> heard that it, it's like the the best selling Oktoberfest in I think in Green Bay yeah. oh, for yeah. package. Well, if he's if he's on it, you know, because he's a beautiful man. Yeah, people buy re- <laughs> beer for many different reasons. So if that's one no, of them, if that's you okay. see the label, it's uh, it's fantastic. Really? It's like because everybody knows him. So, can you email me that? Or you could go pick up a six pack. Oh, is it's out now? Yeah. yeah. Oh well, okay. I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, well, then I'll do that for sure. So where can where can I pick up a six pack? Uh, I want to say festival. Yeah. Woodman's Ridgeview Liquor most likely has it too. They always keep our stuff on hand. Um, if I can shamelessly promote them right now, you they can shamelessly they... promote everybody. That's okay. what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're great friends of ours too, and they've always been very good to Title Town, and they have a great selection of beer. So Excellent. I'm assuming they have it. I haven't been in there in a, few, in a while. Um, your local liquor stores have it so you have it pretty much everywhere trying to be yeah um and anybody that's not how would they get it like if there's a if there's a shop owner listening how would how oh would they... yes um you just have to contact your uh k d- distributing rep okay and so you guys they will help you distributing yeah or could they call you and you could help hook them up 
they don't know how to do that? They would call me, but then I would just sure. call K. And... Okay. Okay. So Plus, they already know their guys from K. All right. Yeah. So I only have a couple more things, and some of these aren't going to be about beer. Um, so some of your friends last night, they didn't have much to say about Heather because they said, well, Heather's just professional. And <laughs> <laughs> they were my closest friends, obviously. Um, but I, so I asked you how many people you wanted at your at your party last night because I heard the claim was that you wanted a thousand. <laughs> and she might, I may have had a couple she, beers when I she made that may claim. have said she wanted. One thousand. I, there. you know what, we didn't keep track, but uh, it was there were a lot of people there. There were hundreds at least. Yeah. So it was, it was I was, I mean, when I walked in, I was sort of uh, taken aback because I kind of expected it to be, you know, five people from Title Town <laughs> and me, and then it was like half the city was there. It was uh, pretty awesome, and uh, that's a testament to you being sort of a spokesperson. Both of you guys, excellent spokespeople for you know for Title Town and being active in the community so you know good job on that as like a backhanded way of giving you a compliment um i don't know what this is all about but uh i was supposed to ask you how much you like m&ms do you know anything about that um i i i enjoy m&ms i think just as much as the next person <laughs> i think I, okay, so, I think the implication was more yeah but I, I don't know i uh, i received a very large bag of peanut butter m&ms well okay here's how that went down <laughs> so People have asked me what your favorite food is, and I can't pinpoint anything. I can only tell them what you don't like because you're like me. We like everything. And so Brooke called me, and she's like, what's Heather's like?" Brooke favorite? with an E. Yeah. She's like, what's Heather's <laughs> favorite food? And I was like, uh, crab legs. And she's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, crab legs. And she's like, uh, Christina, like a snack, like a real food. And I'm like, well... <laughs> A real food? I was like, I don't know. Snappers? Can you, can you find snappers? Which are an amazing candy if you ever find it. She's like, I, I don't know what that is. I was like, okay, well, M&M's. I know she likes M&M's. The pretzel kind. Or peanut butter. Whatever. I don't know. Just get here. All right. And it's so. off the rails. Okay. Two last questions because we've got to wrap up. Uh, we have a hard stop in like three minutes. Uh, Sam said I'm supposed to ask you what the weather report is. He thought, and he thought that was hilarious. So please tell me it's hilarious. Uh, he downloaded a kitty app on my phone that dresses a kitty in a different like costume to tell you what the weather's like. So if it's raining, the okay. kitty's in a raincoat. So that uh, that's actually a two part then, because then Alex said to ask you to make the kitty noise. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We hear that many times a day. Oh, my gosh. And over the walkie-talkies. Well, okay, the story behind that is my cats come when I call them, and that's how I rein them in. Okay, which brings me to the last one. And Rory said that uh, you had you have uh, – this is sort of weird and disgusting to me, but you've made uh, cakes for your cats. Oh, God. Oh, they I are, did. They, they, they are disgusting. I have seen them in person, and she says they're good. It's made with stuff that you can eat. <laughs> this is it's just, uh, uh, yeah. I okay, it's tuna <laughs> flour and cheddar cheese. You lost me a tuna. Disgusting. And I, <laughs> and I, so why did you make the cake at, at first? It was Jaxie's birthday. Yeah, we put him in a hat. Heather got balloons. So I know this is supposed to be a you know show up promotion this is really an intervention we're here to we're here to stop this the kitty madness yes no why right? not I, cannot are you be with me on this heather absolutely <laughs> okay last question and then I we're love those and, then, little and, and, and then we're out <laughs> so uh when you guys come back we'll talk more about beer of course but uh when you come back who would you like to be our guest if you come back to guest host with me who will be our guest either of both of you you can each have one whatever you want so there will be four of us? There will be, you know, maybe two of us, you know, one of you guys and me, and we'll interview somebody else or all three of us, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Who would you like Ooh. to see? That's really the question. Who would you like to have? Who would you like to, me to have on here? Another brewery person. Yeah. So who? Um, I I want Charlie Papazian. Oh, come on. Sorry. Realistically. Yeah. Um, and Brian Turner. And who are these still guys? Still kind of a stretch. I was thinking maybe uh, I just heard. Um, I don't know if you maybe know uh, anything about this, but uh, this this Leatherheads thing. Oh um, yeah, I just read an article about. I that. would love to have somebody from this this new seven barrel brew pub thing that I hear is coming out. I, I would love to meet these people and see what what they've got planned. Okay, so when I hunt these guys down, you guys want to be a part of that? Let's do it. Okay. 
Yeah. You named a couple other ones, but what if I get some of the other breweries in town? Do you guys want to be a part of that? Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, they're all right. They're all right. <laughs> so that's it. Anything else? Otherwise, we're going to throw the track on and we're going to close out. You mm-hmm. guys have anything we didn't say? Always. Lots. So uh, any promotional words? How You guys want people to find you online? Any, uh, you want to t- pimp Title Town at all? Got yeah, I mean, always. 10 second clip. What do you got? You can always go to Title Town's Facebook page. We've got a bunch of stuff coming up. Uh, and tap Room Hours are expanding too, so okay, be sure to check awesome. us out. And Heather doesn't have anything yet for Pabst because we don't even know if it's going to be called Pabst. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So. But we do know that it's going to be in a really awesome place. True. Very, very much. Nice. Yep. So our last track is going to be Trail of Paradise. And that is also from Max. And that'll kind of take us out and then we're done. So. Just waiting for the play button to work. Thank there you. There we go. Yes. Good luck, Heather. Thank you. You guys were awesome. Good. Thanks This for is the best us. show yet. Mostly because you, you guys say are, that to all the. I guys. do. I I, I said to most of them, but uh, uh, you guys are young. Thank you.